Hey everyone, Steve Patterson here from PhotoshopEssentials.com. In this video, I'll show you three easy ways to blend two images together in Photoshop. We'll start with the most basic way to blend images using the Opacity option in the Layers panel. Then we'll look at how to get more interesting and creative results using Photoshop's Layer Blend modes. And finally, we'll learn how to blend images seamlessly together using a layer mask. I'll also include some tips along the way to help speed up your workflow and get the best results. I'll be using Photoshop CC, but any recent version will work. Thanks for joining me, and let's get started. The first way we'll look at for blending two images together is by using Photoshop's Layer Opacity option. Here's the first image I'll be using. I downloaded all of the images for this tutorial from Adobe Stock. If we look in the Layers panel, we see that I also have a second image open in the same document, and each image is on a separate layer. I cover how to move images into the same document in a separate video. To view the image on the background layer, I'll turn off the image above it by clicking the top layer's visibility icon. And now we see the second image. I'll turn the top layer back on. One way to blend these two images together is by using the Opacity option in the Layers panel. You'll find it in the upper right. The Opacity option controls the transparency of the selected layer, and by default it's set to 100%, which means that the layer is not blending at all with the layer below it. But just by lowering the Opacity value, we can make the layer more transparent and let some of the image below it show through. I'll lower the Opacity value from 100% down to 75%. And right away, some of the beach photo on the background layer is now showing through the portrait image on layer 1. We're seeing 75% of the top image and 25% of the bottom image. If I want to fade the woman even more into the background, all I need to do is lower the opacity value even further. I'll lower it to 30%. At 30% opacity, we're seeing just 30% of the top image mixed with 70% of the bottom image, creating a nice effect. You'll want to adjust the opacity value as needed for your images. And here's a quick tip to speed up your workflow. You can change a layer's opacity value directly from the keyboard. Press 1 for 10%, 2 for 20%, 3 for 30%, and so on. Press two numbers quickly, one right after the other, for more specific values, like 2-5 for 25%. Press 0 for 100% opacity, or quickly press 0 twice for 0%. And that's how to blend images together using the Layer Opacity option in Photoshop. I'll switch over to my second document by clicking on its tab at the top so we can look at the second way to blend images, and that's by using Photoshop's Layer Blend Modes. Blend modes are great for blending any two images together, but they're especially useful for blending a texture with a photo. Here's the first image I'll be using, and if we look in the Layers panel, we see that I also have a texture image on Layer 1 above it. I'll turn the texture on by clicking the top layer's visibility icon. Blend modes are different ways that layers can interact with each other. The Blend Mode option is found in the upper left of the Layers panel, directly across from the Opacity option. By default, a Layers Blend Mode is set to Normal. Normal just means that the layer is not blending at all with the layers below it. But if we click on the word Normal, we open a menu with lots of different blend modes to choose from. We won't go through all of them here, but three of the most popular and useful blend modes are Multiply, Screen, and Overlay. I'll choose Multiply from the list. And here we see the texture image now blending in with the portrait image below it. The Multiply Blend Mode creates a darker overall effect. And the opposite of Multiply is Screen. Screen creates a much brighter effect. And if we try the Overlay Blend Mode, we see that Overlay blends the two layers together and increases the overall contrast. Now the results you'll get from these different blend modes will depend a lot on the images. In my case, the blend mode that works best with these images is Soft Light. Soft Light is similar to Overlay in that it increases contrast, but Soft Light gives us a more subtle and natural looking result. Here's what the image looked like without the texture. And here's what it looks like with the texture blended in. Another blend mode that works really well with these two images is Divide. 
Divide is one of Photoshop's lesser-known and rarely used blend modes, but in this case, I think the result looks pretty cool. It's a bit too intense, but we can fix that by combining blend modes with the layer opacity option we looked at earlier. I'll leave the blend mode set to Divide, but I'll lower the opacity value from 100% down to 50%. With the texture layer now 50% transparent, the effect of the blend mode is less intense. I'll set the opacity back to 100% so we can look at a tip you can use when working with layer blend modes. You can cycle through Photoshop's blend modes directly from your keyboard. Press the letter V to quickly select the Move tool. Then press and hold your Shift key and use the plus or minus keys to move up or down through the list. The plus key moves forward through the blend modes and the minus key moves backwards and this lets you quickly try out the different blend modes to find the one that works best. So let's look at a third way to blend images in Photoshop, and that's by using a layer mask. I'll switch over to my third document by clicking its tab, and here we see one of the images I'll be using. If we look in the Layers panel, we see that I also have a second image on the background layer. I'll hide the top image by clicking its visibility icon, and here's my second image. To bring the first image back, I'll again click the visibility icon. Now, layer masks are the most popular way to blend two images together. Unlike the layer opacity option or the blend modes, which affect the entire image as a whole, a layer mask lets us control exactly where the two images will blend together. To add a layer mask, make sure the top layer is selected. Then click the add layer mask icon at the bottom of the layers panel. A layer mask thumbnail appears beside the layer's preview thumbnail. Layer masks control the transparency of a layer, just like we saw with the opacity option in the layers panel. But while the opacity option affects the entire layer at once, a layer mask lets us add different levels of transparency to different parts of the layer. In other words, we can use a layer mask to show some areas while hiding others. They work using black and white. Any part of the layer where the layer mask is filled with white remains visible, and any part where the mask is filled with black is hidden. Let's see how we can quickly blend our two images together by drawing a black to white gradient on the layer mask. Select the Gradient tool from the toolbar. Then, in the Options bar, click the arrow next to the Gradient swatch to open the Gradient Picker. Choose the black to white gradient by double clicking on its thumbnail. In the Layers panel, make sure that the Layer Mask, not the image itself, is selected by clicking on the Layer Mask thumbnail. You should see a highlight border around it. Then, click on the image and drag out a black to white gradient. Remember that black will hide that part of the layer and white will show it. In my case, I want the left side of the photo, the part with the girl, to remain visible. So the left side of the mask will need to be white. And I want to hide the right side, so the right side of the mask needs to be black. Since we're drawing a black to white gradient, which means it starts with black and ends with white, I'll click on the right side of the image and drag horizontally over to the left. Press and hold your Shift key as you drag to move straight across. Release your mouse button to draw the gradient. And notice that because the gradient was drawn on a layer mask, not on the image itself, we don't see the gradient. Instead, we see that Photoshop has used the gradient to hide the right side of the image so the image below it on the background layer can show through. If you're not happy with how the image is blended together, just click and drag out a new gradient to try again. The area in between, where you click to start the gradient, and where you release your mouse button, becomes the transition area where the two images blend together. If we look at the Layer Mask thumbnail in the Layers panel, we see where the gradient was drawn. The black area on the right is where the image on Layer 1 is hidden from view, so we can see the image below it. And the white area on the left is where the image on Layer 1 remains visible. We can also view the actual layer mask itself in the document. If you press and hold the Alt key on a Windows PC or the Option key on a Mac and click on the layer mask thumbnail, you'll switch your view in the document from the images to the layer mask. And this makes it easier to see exactly what's going on. Again, the area of black on the right is where the top layer is hidden. And the white area on the left is where it's visible. Notice the actual gradient area in the middle that gradually moves from black to white. 
This area is what creates the smooth transition between the two layers and allows the images to blend seamlessly together. To switch your view from the layer mask back to the images, again press and hold your Alt key on a Windows PC or the Option key on a Mac and click the Layer Mask thumbnail in the Layers panel. And finally, here's a quick tip for working with layer masks. You can toggle a layer mask on and off by pressing and holding your shift key and clicking the layer mask thumbnail. Click on the thumbnail once to temporarily disable the mask and view the entire layer. A red X will appear in the thumbnail, letting you know that the mask is turned off. Hold shift and click the thumbnail again to turn the layer mask back on. And there we have it. That's how to blend two images together using the layer opacity option, layer blend modes, and a layer mask in Photoshop. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider liking it, sharing it, and subscribing to our channel. Visit our website, photoshopessentials.com, for more tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I'm Steve Patterson from photoshopessentials.com.